Good afternoon, Mr. Pastor Sampson. Welcome to another Tuesday afternoon Bible study. Our Bible study today will be living in the morning with the end in sight. And what that what that title curtails is is that we are we are being warned about the things that God is doing just before the coming of His Son Jesus. We are living in the last days. I'm not saying that just because. I want to make up something in my mind to tell you. I'm telling you we're living in the last days because the Bible proves that we're living in the last days in so many different ways. So what we need to do is we need to get an understanding as a pastor teacher to bring you to perfection, to bring you to an understanding, to bring you to a maturity of the wisdom and knowledge of what God is doing. I need to bring you up to the understanding what you see happening in the earth realm are prophecy unfolding of the warnings of the end of time. You say, well, they've been, they've, been, they've, been, they've been happening. No. What we need to really get an understanding of is that God said the closer it gets to his son's return, it's going to wax worse and worse to the point times such as man has never seen in the history of the world. Right now, I'm 65 years old. I have seen some times in America in this season of 2020 that I've never seen before in my life. I've seen it not only with Corona, I've seen it with leadership. Not only from the White House down, I've seen it from the church house. And the Bible speaks of all. He says in the last days, the leaders would have the mind of children. If you understand what I'm saying, America founded on we the people, in God we trust, one nation under God, elect the leaders for our best interests. But the leaders are no longer. They have become so fat cat that they only fulfill their own desires. No matter what the poor want, no matter what the people want, the leaders think now that they own the United States. So therefore, the only government that can be trusted is Isaiah 9, 6. Write that down. Isaiah 9, 6, that's the only government that can be trusted. The wonderful counselor, the prince of peace. That's the only government that can be trusted. Because I don't care who you put in the White House. Man has no discipline of his own mind and desires unless it's disciplined by the word of God. Renewed by the word of God. So therefore, my job is to preach and teach the word of God. Now, what I've got to do when I'm setting the foundation is I've got to get you to understand that God does not only operate in what was. He don't only operate in what is. He, so, he also operates in what is to come. He brings what is to come. So if, if prophecy is told to you, it's told to you, number one, for you to understand it. Number two, it is for you to prepare for what God said he's going to bring because he don't lie. So if God tells you he's going to bring our number one study for the night, E e Ephesians, if God tells you he's going to bring something called the evil day, we need, we as pastors need to be teaching the people in our church what we should be doing in the evil day. If God said they're going to be proud as times, the pastor teacher is supposed to be preaching, this, teaching the sheep what is supposed to be done at perilous times, what perilous times will look like, what the evil day will look like. What the falling away would look like. What famine of the hearers of the word of God would look like. Lovers of sales, lawlessness, un man being unnatural, deception in God's house, people waging and having a form of godliness for denying God's power and spiritual blindness. These are ten subjects that I'm pulling right off the top of what God wants the pastor teacher to prepare his sheep for in the latter days. The first thing I'm going to do right now is pray. And then I'm going to go prove to you by the Bible that we are actually living in the last days. So all these things I have mentioned,
kitchen or for you to prepare for what you are seeing because if nobody teaches it to you, you can't have a wisdom and knowledge of what's going on. So you will stand up in the church and ask the question, what in the world going on with all this killing? Well, God told you. God told you what was going to happen. He told He prepared you for this. So we're going to take two of them, and we're going to try to discuss tonight the evil day and perilous times. We're going to discuss the evil day first, because we need to get an understanding of what it looks like, what is demanded of the children of God, evil day, and what the children of God can and cannot do. Spirit of the living God in the scroll, let me give you first and foremost, Father, shower down on us, Lord. A fresh anointing. Father, the anointing that breaks yokes, Father, that I will understand and I from you would be hearing what the word of God is saying to his sheep. So, Father, there's so many running to and fro being entertained. Father, having no idea what's going on out there in the earth realm. Then instead of them walking in agreement with you, they're just praying, praying, praying anything. But you told us how to pray when we saw the evil day. You told us what to put on. You told us what to do. You told us he who will let, which is you, God, is going to let, which means you're going to allow these things to happen because actually what is happening is testing the believer to exercise those promises that you have given. Exercise the name of Jesus. Exercise prayer. Exercise sending the word. Exercise calling a thing as though it is. So you, 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 you actually got us in the refiner's fire to make us practice what we've been given all these years. Bringing us to be the church through severe pressure, through severe storms. Father, for that we say thank you. Now refine us, Father. Burn those impurities out of our soul, our hearts, and our minds. Kill those desires that we have, that we put before you all the time. Father, that we may make you first in all that we do. Father, I realize that it's severe testing. Father, we'll draw closer to you than we ever have before. Father, when we're not being tried, when we're not being in that storm, we seem to run away from you. We seem not to call on you. We seem not to have no relationship. So, Father, whatever you got to do to save souls, to set souls free, to bring them in a relationship with you, let it come, Father. Let it come. For this is your service, pray in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Amen. We're going to Ephesians 6. And, and Paul is the author of Ephesians 6. And, and we want to start at Ephesians 16. And Ephesians 16 says this. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. That is important. That's key. He said he wants you to not only read about the armor, not only be able to name the armor. He said, but you need to get in the armor. Okay, we need to document something before I begin to explain what we're reading. He said, put on the whole armor of God that we may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. So wiles means trickery, deception, seducing, beguiling. He says, put on the whole armor that you may be able to stand against him. Satan is the adversary against the saint. The one with the blood stain of Jesus Christ being crucified and resurrected. Satan is the adversary. Let's move on. Here's what he said. Finally... Here's what he said, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual weaknesses and high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, having done all to stand. Now, he mentioned a, 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 a something he called the evil day. That is Ephesians 6.13. Now, 
What we need to get an understanding is, is that the revelation of God has been given of himself. God is given, God is the author of the Bible. He's given us an understanding that there's going to be an evil day. What man, what preacher, what doctor, what apostle it can tell you that there's not going to be an evil day when you just read it. Let God be true in every man a liar. Bring your ears with you now. Open up your heart. Don't put your eyes on me because I'm man too. I'm trying to lead you to what God said because God is his word. So God is speaking right here about an evil day. Now what we need to understand is God has provided something for the believer for the evil day. What has he provided? I'm glad you asked. He has provided a armor. That you should not just know about, you should just not hear about, but that you should put on. He has provided before the armor can be effectively, you need to put it on. Cause, note, without it, one will not be able to stand firm and oppose the devil's schemes. Spiritual armor going into a physical battle. The enemies are many, powerful, evil, and they are everywhere. Now, what I just said, let me go back and rehash it. One will not be able to stand firm and oppose Satan's schemes. Spiritual armor going into a physical battle. The enemies are many, powerful, evil, and they are everywhere. So, if you cannot withstand Satan's schemes without this armor in the evil day, how many of you know anything about putting it on? How many of you have even studied the evil day and what's going to be happening in the evil day? This is something God told Paul to tell us. Is it important to you because it's scripture and man does not live a bread alone, but everywhere that be seated out in the mouth of God. And when you read Matthew 4, it was the beginning of Jesus' ministry. We're here in 2020 now, and if you haven't seen the evil day, what have you seen? Let's roll on. So, you've got to understand when we go down here, listen to what he says. Ephesians 6, 12. For we, the saints of God, we don't fight physical stuff. We fight in the spiritual realm, in the invisible realm. We don't fight with the lady sitting over on chair number two because our aunt bought that window. We don't fight with the pastor. We don't fight with the deacon. We fight the adversary on his turf in the invisible realm. Listen to what he said. Listen to how many of them they are. Listen to how he said it. Listen to this. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, number one, powers, rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Get this. Rulers, there are rulers in the cosmos over whole regions of, of, of a city. Having drugs being in there, prostitution being in there, homosexuality being in there, everything going on. It has a wicked ruler in the cosmos, and we are sitting up here calling the police, telling the police, you need to do something about that neighborhood over there, and we ain't called the power of the universe. See, because God just told you, if you put on the armor, you can stand against what Satan wickedness is doing in the cosmos. You can call the police. But don't move the spirit in the, in the, in the cosmos and the, and the people can move out and they can turn the houses down and build some more. And that spirit going to be waiting on there for the same people with the same mind to move back in there with all that wickedness. That's how it's passed down through the generations. So let's talk about this evil day. There are rulers Satan has in the cosmos, powers in the universe, authorities, demonic forces, they exercise limited power because God's people got all power because Jesus transferred it to them. Power in opposition to God. The powers of this dark world and spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Satan's evil. The enemies that are the spiritual forces behind the world system that oppose God. 
everything Satan has done in his system to blind your mind is evil. He doesn't have any love for anyone. The, the car dealership ain't going to love you and give you a car simply because you're a Christian. The car dealership has a blind, perverse gimmick going. He wants your money. If you ain't got no money, you don't want to talk to you. The loan company don't want to talk to you. They want your money. The housing people, they don't want to talk to you. They want your money. The church, if you ain't got no tithe, you're not too popular. So, see, it's a money thing in Satan's world. That's why Revelation 18 talks about the merchants and the kings of all the nations drinking the wine of the fornication because we are in the evil day and you are only known in society according to the American dream about how much money you make. May I go a step further? What color your skin is? So now, you're saying, Pastor Sessler, what are you saying? I'm getting to it. We must recognize the spiritual make nature of our opponent. We must recognize what Satan is doing because let me read you what God says. See, I'm not making this up. Let me read you what God said. He says, Finally, my brother, be strong in the Lord and, pin, and put and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able, who the saint, that ye may be, be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. He's telling us who we are fighting against. And then he goes on to say, Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor. He has repeated the whole armor twice. This is the second time. He said, Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand, stand therefore having your loins girded about with the truth, having on the breastplate of righteousness. He said, I want you to stand with the truth. Because anything outside the truth, Satan has a legal right to it. Let me say that again. Anything outside the truth, because God is truth, Jesus is truth, the Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth, the word is the word of truth. Anything outside the truth, Satan has a legal right to it because he is the father of lies. So if you are in a church, I ain't don't make no difference to me what church you go to. I'm preaching anyway. You can just get out of the way. I'm not going to stop because God gave me this message. I'm going to preach it. So if you in any church that the truth of the word of God is not in there and the man of God is standing in the pulpit, amen, amen, amen. Yes, bless, 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 bless. Amen, amen, amen. We are from that apostolic uh, Shabbat and uh, Nasa, and you ain't understood the word they said. How is that going to set you free? See, because it's the word of God that flows from heaven. John 1, 1 said, in the beginning was the word, the word was with God, and the word is God. And John 1, 14 said, the word was made flesh to dwell among us. And the spirit of truth comes down to reveal the word to you. God's word. Because God's word is true. So therefore, if you go in a church and the truth is not in that church according to God, you can't be set free from Satan. Because the father of lies can tell the father of truth he minds, she minds, because he's not on truth. She's not on truth. Let me ask you this question before I roll on. When Eve and Adam did not stay on the truth of what God said and listen to the serpent say, has God said, what happened to them? What happened to them? They got expelled from the blessings of God called the Garden of Eden. Let's roll on. No, 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 believers will not know when or where the next assault? See, because uh, Second Peter says Satan gets up to seek who he may devour. He has a very well-organized army. You don't know where your next assault is coming from, but you can trust and believe this. Satan's whole world system is made up to seduce and blind your mind, and we are in the evil day because he has launched principalities, Powers in the cosmos, rulers of darkness in this world against spiritual weaknesses and high places. 
Satan has lost it all. That's why it's called the evil day. It is so evil that the understanding of who is a man or woman of God cannot even be told by the church. The church has become so entertaining, so manipulative, so full of witchcraft, that they'll call a cactus a man of God. They'll call a wolf in sheep clothing a man of God. They'll put a parcel on a skunk. I'm telling the truth. And then they've invented something that God did not even add on the altar. They got a doctor now. And if you're not a doctor, they don't want you in their church. They say, well, you're so prone on the doctor. I am. Because I haven't found it. Anything that's not in this book, I'm not going to add to it. And I'm not going to take it away. So if you're the doctor, you are getting caught up in exalting yourself. When you should be owning yourself. Because actually, if you don't have the wisdom and the understanding given to you by the Holy Spirit, by the Holy Spirit to understand these Holy Scriptures and, and, treat, and teach them to your saints, so you can bring them to the maturity because Mark 13 says God has foretold us all things and you are sitting up running around and around. You don't know what's going on. You can't teach your sheep what's going on. We're in the evil day because the shepherds are teaching, but they don't know what the world they're teaching. And then we're in the Leo the Seal era because the church can't be hot. They're lukewarm and they're cold because simply they're not on truth. We in the evil day. Let's run on. The climax of the preparation we have just talked about. The armor. But we've been the climax and understand something. Let's go on down. Let's look at 18. We've got the armor. We've got the understanding that if you don't put it on, it ain't going to be effective. The Satan principalities, rulers of darkness in the cops, most wicked spirits, they're going to do their job. They come into devour. He told you to put on the armor so you can be effective in the evil day, so you can stand against the trickery of Satan in the evil day. Ain't that what he said? So now I'm not making this up. We're reading it. Now watch this. 618. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit, and watching there and too with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. He said, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit. Can anybody out there tell me what it means to pray in the Spirit? No, I'm not talking about speaking in tongues. That's not what I'm talking about. I, I want to know if you have got an understanding of what it means to pray in the Spirit. Let's, let's, let's go somewhere for a minute. Let's go to John 6. 63. John 6, 63. John 6, 63. Watch this. John 6, 63. Now, let me read this again. It says, 8, 618, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit. Okay, John 6, 63. Listen to what John 6, 63 says. It is the spirit that quickens. The flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit. The words I speak unto you, they are spirit. 618 says, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. Pray in the Spirit. How do you pray in the Spirit? You pray the Word. You pray God's promises. Let me, let me read John 5, 6, 18, 63. It is the Spirit that quickens. The, fle the flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are Spirit and they are life. The Word. Pray in the Spirit. Now, that's the climax of praying in the Spirit, praying in communion with God. If God is His Word, when you pray His Word, you're praying in communion with the Holy Spirit. Romans 8, 26. Let's look at it. Romans 8, 26. 
Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit itself make it intercession for mm -hmm. us with groaning, which cannot be uttered. But he that searcheth the heart knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. Where do you find the will of God for you at? The Spirit maketh intercession according to the will of God, but the will of God is the Holy Scriptures. Let's look at 28. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the call according to his purpose, for whom he did foreknow he also did predestine to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren, moreover whom he did predestine, them he also called, and whom he called, them he also justified, and whom he justified, them he also glorified. Now, 29, 30. We done read it. Now we want to go to 1 Corinthians 2. 1 Corinthians 2. And we're going to move on because I want to get somewhere with you. So now God said put on the whole armor. You'll be effective if you put the armor on. 1 Corinthians 2, 6. God said you'll be effective if you put the armor on and then pray in the spirit. How are you going to pray in the spirit? Well, we answer that. You're going to pray because his word is spirit and it's life. And you want to be in communion with what God is saying and what the Holy Spirit is revealing. So if God tells you he's going to pour a plague out, what is the use of you praying for God to heal the plague? Because God just told you, I'm bringing this because of this. Here's what I told you to do. He didn't tell he, I didn't tell you to pray to me for me to stop it. I told you to put the armor on. And then I told you to pray in the spirit. I didn't tell you to stop to pray to me to stop the evil day. I told you that the evil day was coming, and here's how you can get through it. You can get through it if you put on what I told you to put on and you pray the way I told you to pray. You getting this? Are you getting this? Okay, let's move on. 1 Corinthians 2, 6. How bet we speak wisdom among them that are perfect? Yet not the wisdom of this world, nor of the princes of this world that come to naught. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory, which none of the princes of this world knew. For had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But it is written, eyes have not seen, nor ears heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that love him. But God has revealed them unto us by his spirit. The spirit searches all things, yea, the deep things of God. Now look at 20. Which one? 6 through 16. No, we're going to read 6 through 16. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, 11, 12. Now we have not received the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, which is of God that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. We got the knowledge of God. We got the word of God that we may know the things freely given to us of God. The evil day is coming because God said he's going to allow it. He said it was coming. Who's going to stop it? Okay, let's move on. Which things also we speak not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. Now, but the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God. Now, have you ever noticed that your neighbor that used to come to church don't want to seek the God that you serve? 
But if the doctor tells that neighbor something is wrong, they went on a cruise last year at this time, a year before that, and the doctor gave them some bad news, and now they know you've been going to church. They want to come to you and ask you, can you pray for me? The doctor said that I had something wrong, and I asked you to pray for me, please. Well, let me ask you this question. What you going to pray? He just told you the world can't have it if they don't want to seek God for themselves. See, here's the catch. God will meet them. He'll meet the bike slider. He'll meet that one that confess with their mouth and believe in their heart. He'll meet them right where they are. He'll forgive that person that's been going the wrong way that wants to turn. But instead of them wanting God and coming back to God, they're going to come over and pimp you because you got a relationship with God and they're going to ask you, to pray to God for them, talk to God for them. I want his healing. I want you to stand in the gap and intercede for my healing because the doctor told me something, but I don't want your God. I don't want to go to the altar. I don't want to read my Bible. I don't want to know him for yourself, for myself, but I want you knowing him to give me a healing. What I would tell that person is simply this. I pray God restore you and for you to come back to God, because if you come back to God, he said by his stripes ye are healed. That means the healing that you are looking for would be applied to you if you ask him to forgive you and repent of your sins. Then the healing would be guaranteed to be yours because the spirit of adoption will move in you and guarantee it. But now if you're going to ask me to use my relationship with God to cover you, but you want his healing, but you don't want my God, no. I'm going to pray God... Save your soul. That that's 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 praying in agreement and in communion with God. See, because the heart, the, the prodigal son had to come to his senses and go back to the father's house. He didn't stay in the hall pen and, and tell somebody, hey, go tell my daddy I need some money because I'm eating with the hogs. No, he had to come to his senses. What he wanted. The hog pen gave him a turn of life. And he went back. That person ain't coming back to God. That person wants to pimp God through you. Okay, okay, I'm going to move on. We in the evil day. We don't know how to touch and agree with God because God's will is to save mankind. The highest quality of, of, of healing is, is salvation. And if you have tasted of him and turned around, you, he's married to the backslider. Why you got to come to me and ask me to pray for your healing? Why don't you just submit to God, confess to God, and let him apply healing to you? So I'm going to pray God, God save you. And then when God saves you, healing is guaranteed to you. Okay, I'm moving right along. When he said praying through all supplications, we need to get an understanding that constant communion with God is praying with God's word by the Holy Spirit. Now we need to get an understanding. We just covered the evil day. The climax of the evil day was after you put on what God supplied you with so that you can stand against the wiles of the trickery of the devil. So that you can do all you can do to stand in the evil day is not have and know about the armor, but put the armor on so it can be effective for the evil day. Now, let me prove that we are in the latter days. Go with me to Hebrews, please. Hebrews 1, 1. God at sundry times in diverse mountains spake in times past unto the fathers by the prophets. Has in these last days. Two. Has in these last days spoken unto us by his son, whom he has appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds. In these last days. We're in the last days because God is speaking to us by his son. He's describing to us what the last days are going to look like. 
when he tells you to put on all the armor, he's giving you a preparation of the last days. He's preparing you by telling you, let's not fight against each other. Let's fight Satan. Let's stand against his wiles. Let's stand against him and his wickedness in high places. Let's stand against his spirit of darkness. Are you getting this? So now, we've just documented about the evil day, and there's such thing as an evil day, and that is a warning that you must put on the armor of God, not know of it, but wear it. It's simply you seeking the word of God. Every piece of that armor comes from the word of God, including prayer. I'm going to stop right there. Now we're going to go over here and we're going to take this second one, which I was trying to get through. We just covered the evil day and what God gave us to prepare for the evil day, what he gave us to be empowered for the evil day, how he told us to pray for the evil day. We just documented that. Now we're going to perilous times and we're going to see what God said in perilous times. We just proved to you that we're in the last days, not because we see evil days. We're in the last days because God is speaking to us through his son, Jesus. That's how we know we're in the last days. Now, here's what we're going to get an understanding of. Here's what we're going to get an understanding of. Stick with me, man. This is not my Bible. I'm telling you it is my Bible, but it is not the Bible that I normally have. Have and I'm kind of slow, so you have to stick with me. So, perilous times in 2 Timothy 3, we want to go into something. Now, this is going to be a little lengthy teaching, so we're probably not going to get all this one in. But, perilous times, 2 Timothy 3. Now, now, the key to this is for men shall be. For men shall be. Who did he say? For men shall be. Watch this. 2 Timothy 3, 1. For this know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. When did he say? In the last days. How do we know we're in the last days? He, Paul just told us that he's speaking to us through Jesus in the last days. Okay, so we're in the last days. We're between the first time Jesus came and the second time of him coming back. And we are on the tail end of him coming back. So we are far over into the last days. So now listen to what he said. This know also. He said know this. Did he say he might? He said know this. That in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves. For men shall be. Lovers of their own selves, courteous, boastful, proud, blasphemous, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truth breakers. I, I, want, I want to stand right there, truth breaker. Do you know that a, a man of God that is coming from the Bible of God can be standing up telling you the truth? And you will break that truth because you don't want to agree with it and you don't know anything about the Bible, but you're going to say, I don't agree with you. But yet still, because you've got a, 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 a teaspoon full of, of wisdom and knowledge about God, you want to be a truth breaker and push back against the person that's trying to teach you the Bible. For what reason would a man or woman of God want to go through the hell of trying to teach somebody something about God and sit up and have to argue with them trying to help them save their soul. That's crazy. I'm a pastor teaching because I love the Lord. I'm coming to you because I love the Lord. I'm not trying to tell you nothing that I made up. I'm using the Bible. If your pastor is using the Bible, give God be glory. But I'm trying to show you this is what we're standing in. And he's describing these perilous times. And he said, for men shall 
edify you, to pour into your soul, to pray over you. If your ministry is mature enough to take off, start your own ministry. But if it's not, and you haven't seen but one door of the barn, sit down and let God raise you up by increasing you with your thirst and your hunger. Listen to this. The truth breaker. Here's what he says. Without natural affection, truth breakers, false accusers. Oh, Pastor so and so don't know what he's talking about. Incontent, furious, despisers of those that are good. Despisers of those that are good. Traitors, headed, high minded, loving, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. Having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof, from such turn away. If a person has a form of godliness and run up to you and don't want to put the time in, don't want to discipline themselves, don't want to obey God, but they're going to do everything the world wants to do, but they ain't got no time for God who is time provider, life creator. They don't have any time for God, but every time they get in trouble, they want to run to you and use the relationship you and God got. It's like the lady used to run over and say, can you go to your daddy and ask, tell your daddy I'm going to be late on the rent? I said, you go tell him. No, no, I was late last month. And I said, look, I'm his son. I'm not your secretary. You go talk to my daddy because you stand on his land. You're not standing on my land. I'm not being your lawyer. You go talk to him. See, because I've seen you pull this trick before. See, so the real deal is, we, if we're going to be in communion with God, and I can prove what I'm talking about, let me, I just proved it. You didn't hear it. Let me read it again. When you find people, listen to what he says, number four, traitors, heavy, high-minded, lovers of pleasure, more than lovers of God, Having a form of godliness, denying the power thereof, from such turn away. What that mean? From such turn away. And then he backs it up in 1 Corinthians, the fifth chapter. The whole chapter in 1 Corinthians, the fifth chapter, tells you if you got a little leaven in your church, put it out, or it'll spoil the whole church. That's what he said. Hey, hey don't shoot the messenger. I'm on the Bible. I'm on the Bible. If we don't do church the way God said do church, we ask it for trouble. Now, here's what I can do. I can sow a seed on you and wait for God to give you that increase and come back and water it. If God don't give you the increase, you're going to keep on going the way you're going. I'm going to keep on going the way I'm going because the laborers are few in the harvest. Is that not true? Okay, so let's roll on. Okay, so now, we want to really look at this thing. What days are these perilous times? Are they still to come or are, they, are we living in them? Are these perilous times still to come? Lo men loving themselves, truth breakers, uh, 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 people having a form of godliness but no power. Are, are, we, are, are they the still coming or are we living in these days? These last days cover the entire period between the giving of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost and the final return of Jesus. Hebrews 1, 1 through 3, latter times. 1 Timothy 4, 1, latter times. 1 Timothy 4, 1. Watch this. 1 Timothy 4, 1. 1 Timothy 4, 1. 1 Timothy 4, 1 says, Now the Spirit speaking expressly that in the latter times some shall depart the faith, giving heed to seducing spirit. What does a seducing spirit do? It's like a date rape drug. Date rape drug. Most of the time you don't know that spirit is there seducing you. So it, it, it can draw a line and pull you cross over on religion because you now a Christian, you just going to jump up and do everything when Jesus told you the spirit of truth is supposed to lead you to do. Let me say that again. The spirit of truth is supposed to lead you to do. You ought not just to be doing things because you're a Christian. You can do anything you want to do.
Because if heaven have not ordained for the Holy Spirit to lead you into it, it's vanity. Okay, watch this. Now the Spirit speaketh especially that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirit and doctrines of devils. Now where would the doctrine of devils be at? In what we call the church house? Mm -hmm. That's where the doctrine of devils is. Now, this is what man is supposed to be flowing to edify, to educate, to teach God's people. This is what man is supposed to be teaching. This is this is what was, what is, and what is to come. This right here. This is the plan. This is the unleashed plan of God from Genesis to Revelation. This is it right here. So therefore, if if you're going to church and and, and they talking about and preaching about a stop sign. And in the crack house down there, I don't know how that's going to set you free. That might be a testimony for somebody, but it's not empowered to really set you free because the only thing that's empowered to set you free is the Word, and the Word made flesh is Jesus. So the Word is Jesus, and Jesus is the Word. And, and the Word of God is not only made for you to pray in the Spirit, but the Word of God is also to set you free and for you to live by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. So you can't escape the Word of God, and that Word of God is the truth that sets you free. It's just not any word. It takes the truth to set, separate you from God. Let's go on. Focus on the wickedness of the people, self-centered, thinking of self, Christian facade. The front view or elevation of the building. The front view of what Christianity looks like. Never get deep enough to in God to understand the purpose, having a type of godliness, but never deep enough to come to a maturity of the discerning of the spirit or the light of the wisdom or knowledge of God for God to use you to bring him glory. You just got enough power to be a Christian facade, which means... You got a front view of what the building looks like, and you can't, you're not deep enough, you're not far enough in to describe nothing else. Okay, moving right along. 1 Corinthians 6 17 says this. Now I'm finna slide up, I'm finna slide up. 1 Corinthians 6 17 says this. 1 Corinthians 6 17 says simply this. But he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. That's called communion. He that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. Can we work that? Can I work that before I end this thing? He that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. What if God is love? Well, that one spirit, if you join into the Lord, you got that kind of love. What if God is humbled? Well, if you got that one spirit, you're humble too. What if you are saying you are joined God, you are joined into God, and you are proud, lying, confusion, racism, prejudice? Can you say? That that person is joined into the one spirit of the Lord? No. Can you take one act of goodness and say that man or that woman is a man or woman of God joined mm -hmm. unto the spirit of the Lord? You can't lie like that. Mm -hmm. You cannot lie like that. Because let me let me read it again. But he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. We are one in communion with God. We are many members, but we act in union with God. We're not lovers of ourselves. We're not lovers of pleasure. We love what God loves for us. We're not caught up in perilous times being lovers of self and truth breakers and slanderers and deceivers and whites and worse and worse. But we're ones that stand on not the doctrine of devils, but we stand on the truth of the doctrine word of God. That's what we do. That's what a Christian does, because we are joined to the Lord by one spirit, not by a lying spirit. A lying spirit belongs to Satan. He's the father of lies. He's legally got a right to anybody that lies. 
don't know what you're going to do with that. But that's just the truth. Paul's point. There are always people with perverted minds who oppose the truth. In the last days, these people will become increasingly worse until the day of the Lord. False doctrines, results in sinful behavior. False doctrine, results in sinful behavior. These will not welcome sound doctrine and knowledge of the truth. They won't welcome it. So 2 Timothy 3, 13, evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. We are instructed in Christ, in the scriptures, which make you a child of God through faith in Jesus Christ. The most valuable thing a child can inherit it from his family, the teachings of the gospel of the Bible. The truth of the Bible. That's the most valuable thing a parent can hand their child is the truth in the gospel of the word of God. We're in perilous times. Men are loving themselves, deceiving, seducing, and we're sitting up going along thinking that a, 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 a physical government party can save us. And we'll follow behind man and won't never follow behind God. We are so it up with what we're doing in these last days that everybody is in love with the pastor. And all the pastor can do is introduce you. What do your pastor preach out of on Sunday? Why are you so in love with the pastor when the pastor's job is to lead you to Jesus? Why are you making a God out of your pastor? When your pastor was instructed to teach you the wisdom and the knowledge of the Bible, so you would know Jesus for yourself, so you would be perfected, so you would be no more children tossed to and fro. Why are you in love with a man called Trump? When Jesus is the one died on the cross, ain't no McConnell, ain't no Pelosi, ain't no Schumer, ain't no Cooper, ain't none of them died on the cross for you. And you will put all your trust in them and follow them to the pits of hell. Talking out about, I'm with them. Well, go ahead, be with them. Because we're in perilous times. I'm going to continue with Jesus. I'm going to stay on his word. I'm going to endure in him. I'm going to stay with Jesus. And I don't care who don't like it. Because God told my big brother Jeremiah, don't worry about how they look at you. I'm with you. So they more with me. Than they are with that one that wants to believe that falseness. They more than with me. Then those that want to be caught up in that perilous time not knowing what God said, wanting to be seduced and beguiled by Satan, there's more power with me staying with the truth of God's word than there is with the deceiver and with those that want to be deceived and going to wax worse and worse, want to be nat unnatural, want to be truth breakers, slanderers. There's more power with me than that one that's going to stand opposing God because I'm using God's word. I never once asked you for any money. I never once told you to send me any money. I don't jump up and use cliches. God said he going to do it. God said he going to do what? What did God say? You let people prophesy over you and tell you think God said in three days. God said in three days what? You ought not to let people be spewing them lies into you. Because if God want to tell you anything, get your lazy butt up and get this Bible. Because if you ain't got time for this Bible, if you ain't got a, a heart to search this Bible for God, and he is his word, you ain't got time for God. If you deny him, he sure going to deny you. So ain't you using me running over there trying to get you to pray for me if I don't want him for myself. This is Pastor Sam said, we'll see you Thursday night.